ready to go. We're ready, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Oh. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Feeling okay. quite unhinged this fine Thursday evening. Happy Pride! <laughs> Happy Pride, my sweet summer children! Happy Pride Month, everybody. Okay. No, we don't. No, we really don't. Welcome, 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 one and all, to a very special bonus episode of Lit by Moonlight, where sometimes the main characters actually are gay and in love. Take that, Stephen Muffet, you fucker. (laughs) Where sometimes we cannot be fucking normal about the things that we like. a phase to interrupt your book podcast two episodes in solely to, to talk about this amazing fucking show that has us in a chokehold yeah yeah happy bonus episode of lit by the moonlight number three and that's episode number three as we mentioned we literally just dropped our second episode today and we've already decided yeah this is what we're doing yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's time to come online and process this together like a family. Yeah, we both physically could not move on with our podcast as planned. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we have four more episodes already recorded and ready to go. Yeah. We can't even post those without doing this first because it, it doesn't feel, feel right. right. No. We've, we've, um, we may have gone a little bit off our own little schedules right now. Because of this show, and because we both can't stop talking about it, or watching it, or just going absolutely batshit over it. Mm-hmm. So we're doing this to maybe calm ourselves, and also celebrate it finally being renewed for season two. Only, like, what, two or three months after the finale aired? Well, that was it, Yay. right? Yay. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. We're so happy about it. Um... It is the beginning of June, is the beginning of Pride Month, and yesterday, um, HBO Max and David Jenkins and all of our other special friends over at that show announced uh, that um, they've renewed it for season two, and that is what we are here to talk about, and we're also here to process season one a little bit, because as we previously stated, the thought of going on with our normal lives without putting out some thoughts into the interweb about how much we love this show so very much um it would just it would be a crime it would be a crime it really would uh, be so without further ado um i'm emberlyn and i have not one fucking clue where i am i'm caitlin and i haven't felt this unhinged in a long time <laughs> like i i legitimately <laughs> am going insane <laughs> like, i know i don't know what's going on you know how Edgar Allan Poe wrote all of those uh, little uh, stories about um, going insane? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Those were about me. <laughs> those he was were about like, me. someday in the year 2022, Emberlyn Leija is going to go batshit over a gay pirate rom com. Mm-hmm. These are for her. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. exactly what happened. As mm-hmm. a treat, he did that for you. I mean, I was Josh Safdie's views when he wrote Uncut Jams. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Anyway. <laughs> The amount of peaking that our audio is going to do without this throughout this entire podcast is, uh, sorry, it's going to be a lot. Let's get into it, though, because we really want to talk about this show with you guys. It's oh very God, special do. to us, um, and it was really special to us that we share it with you in the form of this wonderful little special um, bonus episode. Yeah, um, and if all goes to plan, you'll be seeing us this episode. Yes, yes. So, so if you're not seeing us right now fucked it up <laughs> and if if you hear anything about being able to see us then um follow the link to our youtube and check us out anywho caitlin yeah <laughs> yeah uh-huh. yeah uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it what do you want <laughs> um anyway uh i hope nobody okay quick full disclosure i hope nobody who like is an employee of HBO Max or who is on this show ever sees this. Um, because I, do. I am all kinds of unhinged. Like, 
Yeah. All kinds of unhinged. Something tells me I'm going to be at, like, a cocktail event sometime in the future, and I'm going to come across, like, God knows who, like, David Jenkins, and I'm going to be like, hey! <laughs> Hi, I hope I hope you didn't hear all the, those things I said about you on on my show about how much I love you and how much I'm like so proud of you and excited that you put together this amazing little show um, for and my little my little gay noggin. Like, thank you. <laughs> and then um, what I'll do because I'm also there at that cocktail hour, I'll be like, Yeah, we're going oh my together. god, David Jenkins, the guy that we talked about on that show. You saw it, right? <laughs> and then I'll just yeah. go completely batshit on him. Because you should give him a QR code for the show. Be like, here, scan your scan this right yeah. now. Like, give Have you seen this it. pirate show? Also, yeah. are you casting? Because I did one movie, so therefore <laughs> you should have me <laughs> on your show. Just saying. I'm going to be like, are you looking for an administrative assistant? Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a master's in public administration, which is not helpful at all, but it could be. <laughs> it could be. Who knows? Wait, yeah, I don't know. Listen, if you're hiring... Anyway, I'm, yeah. Tell me then, Caitlin. Oh my God, tell me, tell me. <laughs> ten minutes later. Tell me, it's literally ten minutes in, and we're just like still like working our way up to actually asking each other a question about this. That is how hard it is for us to talk about this. Like, it's so hard. Oh my God, it's, it's um, not hard. But what's hard is to articulate actual sentences to make sense for people to listen to. Anyway, I'm deeply immersed in Stan Twitter, and I'm, like, slightly ashamed, but, like, a lot of that shame is, um, mostly directed toward, um, toward my archive of our own account. Um, (laughs) anyway, anyway is right, um, let's talk about it, um, so, uh, it got renewed yesterday, which is really exciting. Fucking We've finally, been waiting dude. such a long time for this. Um, it is. I think that's what's making us so unhinged, honestly. If I could come up with a good excuse um, to justify my behavior, um, it's like it took so long to actually hear something about renewal. Um, I don't know what the norm is for shows getting renewed, but I feel like a lot of these shows they usually get renewed a little earlier. Um, so yeah, especially when said show has been the most in demand show on a streaming service for seven weeks in a row. And then it dropped to number two for one week and then popped right back up to number one. Like, how do you not go, Hey, we should, the show that everyone's watching. Yeah. We should renew that one. Yeah. It's like, no, Hello? like not yet. All right. All right. We'll wait. We'll wait. It's not like, mm-hmm. it's not like anybody cares or anything. I think, I think what makes me so unhinged is like, the way it ended, what the show gave us, and then just that period of time of not knowing if it was ever going to come back, mm-hmm. especially with how high quality the show is, mm-hmm. that it was so hard. It was <laughs> like, a void in our lives, yeah. It, watching it and being like, I don't know if we're going to see what happens to them. I don't know if we're going to see anything resolved. I don't know if this comfort show of mine is ever going to come back. Literally. Um, anyway... <laughs> but now it is so we're good <laughs> so. we made it yeah. so um caitlin let's like rewind a little bit let's process season one a little bit together okay, um, okay. what got you hooked on this show tell me about that moment for you uh i got hooked on this show so i would see like just of it on tumblr and I would always scroll fast because, like, I, I had zero context for the show. I didn't know what it was about, except for maybe pirates. I don't know. But it was just a blur until I saw that one of those blurs was Reese Darby. And that man, if you don't know, I mean, if you're listening to this, you know exactly who he is. But yeah. I think he's my most favorite person on this planet because he's so silly and he just, I just get this sense that he's just so unapologetically himself which is something i strive to be as someone who's had insecurities um i just you know he just embraces who he is and he's just like yep i'm that weird new zealand guy and i'm in this show and that show and so i'm the comedic relief in most things and i he just does what he does and he loves it and he sees he just always seems to be having a good time no matter what he's doing and he's so good at it and yeah. So I just think this man is really funny. The first thing I remember seeing him in was the X-Files reboot episode where he was like an alien turned human or something and his name was Guy Man. And mm-hmm. I we were in high school at the time and I remember coming back to school and just 
just reciting all of his lines i thought he was so funny i was literally in tears that entire episode just because everything he was doing was so good and then i also saw him in wrecked um which was a show it, you can mm. watch that on hbo max not a plug but again if you're hiring just you know we're here <laughs> we're here we have nothing experience <laughs> yeah um so i then i saw him in that and his character was my favorite character in that because just, just the way he and it has not I was gonna say it has nothing to do with his accent sometimes his accent helps but like just the way he says things is just so fucking funny to me <laughs> like it's just so good it could be the, like the most simplest line and it it make he makes me laugh so hard so when I saw that he was in this show I was like oh shit Rizari's in it I'll watch this and then later on I found out that Taika Waititi was uh like a producer or in it and I was just like oh well I like everything that guy does too but them together, mm-hmm. this show's probably good. Um, so that's what got me starting to watch this show. Was that your question? What got me hooked? <laughs> <laughs> that was, in fact, my question. Yeah, it feels like years ago now. <laughs> yeah. Um, like... I would, no, I just, I completely forgot because I was just thinking about, uh, you know, the good old New Zealand man in a bucket hat, Reese Darby. <laughs> <laughs> I adore him. I just, he, okay, here, and I'll, oh. so i'll go off about this later but he's very very funny but he's also a fantastic actor Mm. and i'm just very happy that he's getting the recognition he deserves so that he's finally i think this is his first leading role that he's Mm -hmm. had which is insane to me but he's he's just uh he's a phenomenal actor he's so funny you know i can't say more about the man i think he's great i i think i'm very happy for him i don't know him he she doesn't know can't me can't say more yeah she signed I, an nda it's a whole I thing i signed an nda but he sent us a cease and desist letter yeah he's like stop talking about me and my please stop, t- please stop talking about me <laughs> please for the love of god stop and i'm just like okay you're like, as um, you wish, and then you, you turn wish. around and you keep talking about him. Yeah, because I can't, I can't say more good things about him. He's just, I don't know, he's he's a national treasure, even though he's not from here. He's so. an international treasure, if you will. So what hooked you, my dear, on this show? So the way that I was hooked, it was actually uh, kind of an unusual uh, thing. Basically, yeah. I was like sitting at home a couple months ago, um, doing my job, and there was like this weird blue mist siphoning through the vents of my house and I thought hmm an apparition and mm-hmm. I was correct um because David Jenkins materialized and he said oh, yeah dost thou want to live deliciously uh which is exactly what happens in the plot of which uh and I know what comes next <laughs> so of course I followed him uh, and it brought me here nice oh that's very cool so there's kind of no way that you cannot not watch the show when that happens yeah I'm actually cursed to do so yeah, um, nope, that makes sense. Totally checks out. But with that in mind, what really hooked me for real, for real, um, for real for is real. actually um, the you wear fine things well scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for so many reasons, um, I feel like I'm probably not going to say anything new. I, I just want to reiterate um, that for a lot of us who have spent their entire lives um, watching TV that kind of plays on... Um, relationships that could potentially be queer it is so incredibly validating and comforting to see that actualized in the form of unapologetically queer love um because that wasn't what was happening in a lot of the shows that caitlin and i uh grew up with um i will not i will not go back to the sherlock hiatus of like 20 2016 2017 i can't do it i can't go back there again what to think about it i can't go back there again it it, it makes me unwell it, it, it makes my hair fall out um but we're not there anymore we now have an unapologetically queer show um and it's beautiful and i think up until that moment i didn't recognize that there was potential romance between these two characters and it was then and there that it hit me kind of like a ton of bricks that like this is real this is it and we're getting this. Um, yeah. So that was the this moment for me. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> so with with that in mind, um, did you have a favorite episode from season one? 
Oh, God, don't make me choose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I won't. You can have them all. <laughs> <laughs> They're all my favorite for so many different reasons. Um, oh, well, listen, on my many rewatches, which has definitely amounted to at least 10 by this point, um, because I do know how to consume media in a healthy amount. Thank yeah. you for asking. I think She's really good at that. Yeah, I'm so good. Oh, my God. Uh, I think my favorite episode would have to be episode six, The Art of Fuckery. Now, Mm. I picked that one. There's other episodes that I like specifically for, like, a moment in it or just, like, the general vibe of the episode. Like, Mm -hmm. I really like episode five for the You Wear Fine Things Well scene. Um, For a while, my favorite episode was episode seven this is happening because of the whole saint augustine um Mm -hmm. storyline but and then you know i really liked episode eight because of the foot touch and then i really liked episode nine because of the kiss and then you know it's just there's a lot of things that happen in all these episodes and i like all of them for reasons but as a whole episode six is called the art of fuckery which already fantastic title 10 out of 10 they knew what they were doing with that one. Um, and it just, it has all of my favorite things. Uh, it opens up with Ed and Steed sword fighting with the most hilarious and fantastic subtext to a sword fight ever. Mm. Um, and the subtext is fucking. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's canon. Like, that's what the writer said it was. And I think, I just think that's great. I think it's very well done. And I, I just... I also think it's done in such a comical way of just, like, them, Ed teaching Steed how to sword fight and then telling him to stab him with his sword and Steed being like, the fuck are you doing? I don't know. I just, it was very unhinged and I like that about it. Um, And then it cuts to Izzy at the end uh, thinking that, you know, they're doing the deed right on the deck. Mm. <laughs> and uh, it's just really funny, like, his whole reaction. He is constantly in distress in this show, and I think that's funny. Um, but, so there's that, and then the whole, the one whole arc of this episode is that um, Ed teaches the crew of the Revenge the art of fuckery, which is just kind of um, playing tricks on your enemies to get them to basically like give up their stuff to you or be scared of you what have you um so the crew who are all so lovable Mm -hmm. and all so stupid (laughs) affectionate (laughs) like they all are like yeah we have this great idea for a fuckery and they all are into the like the theatrics of it and um, I think one of my favorite lines is when Jim says, like, what if I hack up a dummy with a knife with all this guts, like, spilling out? And they just want to do that so bad. And then they do. And you just see, like, this wonderful silhouette of them, like, pulling out, like, these, like, guts. And they're laughing like an absolutely insane person. And it's hilarious. And they all get to have their own little special part in it. It's like they're all excited to put on this performance. And meanwhile... In the beginning of the episode, we get, like, more backstory to Ed with the Kraken story and him opening up to them being like, oh, the Kraken killed my dad. And then you find out he was the Kraken. He's the one who killed his dad. And he has this whole deeper persona to him underneath the Blackbeard uh, character that he has. So he also, dealing with that trauma, is told by Izzy that... He has to end Steed's life. It's been too long. You said you were. You have to. You're fucking Blackbeard. You gotta do it. And I really like the struggle that Ed has in this show, in this episode, because he very much is, like, he wants to give up the whole pirate life. Like, he's just not having it. He's bored of it. And he just wants to be just a normal guy. And he's been able to find that with Steed. And he has been able to learn that he is someone who could wear fine things like he could have that he could have these things that he never thought he could he could have this normal life but 
he has this whole persona now as Blackbeard and he's a legend and he has to keep that up and in order to do that he needs to kill this person who he has one definitely fallen in love with at this point and two has become his best friend so he has to kill him but he's struggling so hard to do it and in the middle of the at the end of the fuckery they do like this whole crack and shit and it kind of awakens this whole ptsd in ed and he basically goes crying and goes into steve's tub and wraps himself up in one of steve's robes robes and it's just such a vul it's the most vulnerable we've seen him at this point and the the moment that they share together ed and steve like of steve being like hey i'm your friend and maybe we can just forget this whole you were gonna kill me thing and we can move on and like even though you're the kraken that you say or you're blackbeard that doesn't change my view on you like we're friends and it's just it's just a really beautiful moment and then at the end of the episode izzy challenges steed to a duel and that is just hilarious because i think one of my favorite things about izzy is um his use of uh, the word fuck um, and mm-hmm. in this episode he's just like Steve fucking bought it I fucking challenge you to a fucking duel and just the way he I, I won't even pretend to do his voice because it's just so iconic and so funny but it's just really it's hilarious how he says it and he's just so done with this man and then he actually like stabs Steve and in all accounts like he should he should have won the duel he should have been the one to stay on the ship and not Steed but because Steed used a little trick of uh, parrying to the left or the right so that the sword goes into their left side because there's no important organs on the left side. Um, he wins and uh, makes Izzy's sword inoperable because he uses the finest cherry wood on the ship. And uh, Izzy gets booted off and after that whole vulnerable moment between Ed and Seed, they get to continue on their life together. And I just... there's. I mean, that for every episode, there's not a dull moment for me, but this episode in particular, it was just, like, thing after thing after thing. It was just... It, it, I loved it. it. It was very deep in character and very just on top of that, just the, you know, tomfoolery that the crew gets into. And I, I love it. Is That is my answer. What is your favorite episode? I feel like I, I went like... on for 80 years. I was like, I wasn't here for the past I think I just long watched, was... We both just watched the whole episode in your head. <laughs> I did. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, great. Um, so I was like emotional at some point. So I was like, wow, yeah, that did happen. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, it was a tie between discomfort in a married state and act of grace. Um, Mm -hmm. so for me, the former is important, um, just because, um, just the use of, uh, Steed and Mary's marriage as like a foil of like Blackbeard and Ed's eventual romance is so clever. Um, I'm sure that was the intent, um, but it's just so special to me. Like the fact that you finally get to meet Blackbeard and Ed and Steed finally get to meet is so it's something that can be so personal um but like (laughs) the Beach Boys our prayer so it's blaring and then it cuts to credits and I remember sitting right over there on that bed and watching it on this tv over here on the other side of me if you're (laughs) watching along on YouTube um and it was like the bed just like loaded up and then tipped me out the window and I went crashing through the glass and fell out onto the street in Washington, D.C., and the mailman walked over me, and that's what happened. Um, That's just how that scene makes me feel. It was just, like, this perfect encapsulation of love at first sight, I think especially maybe for Ed, and just getting to see that, like, oh, I have, like, if you've never heard our prayer, which if you're here, I'm sure you have, but it's essentially just, like, a lot of, like, there's no lyrics. It's, ah, you know, not going to pretend to sing it, but angelic vocals by the Beach Boys um and I just have that on repeat all day no lyrics nothing remotely catchy about it per se it's just I live my life with the ethereal sense that the Beach Boys our prayer is playing on repeat in my head all fucking day (laughs) Um, yeah that makes sense so there's that and then also uh, I mentioned Act of Grace and I don't I'm not gonna like 
I'm not gonna bullshit you. Like, we all know why it's my favorite episode. (laughs) Yeah. But, like, uh, um, because, like, uh, Reese and Tyga, they deliver one of the most lovely and, like, uh, like, gentle and just wonderful um, on-screen kisses um, ever, like, of all time. And um, maybe I'm no expert, but, I mean, I'm a rom-com queen, and and this really did it for me, guys. (laughs) There's just something so special about the way that they touch each other and, like, the way that they, like, enter into this, like, admission of love um, without really, like, saying it. And it really gets, it's just like, wow, you know? Um, I I know I'm, I've talked to, like, friends about this who watch the show. Um, you and I have talked about it, Caitlin. Um, there was, I think, this sense of nationally when that happened that, like, you know, um, and it's yeah. a great feeling. Yeah. Um, there's also some remarkable acting um, by both uh, Reese and Taika and um, in this episode, uh, that's just really phenomenal, um, and by the rest of the cast. And there's also some great song choices again. Whoever is editing um, the show is doing a prolifically great job. Um, the choice of like uh, Lou Reed's uh, Perfect Day uh, when Steed doesn't come to meet Ed at the dock. Uh, the moment I heard those first chords, okay, um, if you're like me and you're a longtime uh, Doctor Who fan, uh, and you also uh, heard a little bit about Torchwood coming back for a little while there um, on BBC, they used that song for their uh, marketing way back in the day, and that's how I first heard that song. So then hearing it again in this context, having come from my little, like, humble Doctor Who beginnings to this was just a a real, like, um, full circle moment for me. Uh, So yeah, that's how I I feel about that. I just want to give credit to the music supervisor of the show. Uh, Her name is Maggie Phillips. uh, And she, you know, is the one who's behind usually most of all the, like, the licensing and the choosing of all of the songs in this. So uh, we have her to thank for all of the amazing choices. Uh, She also worked on Handmaid's Tale, uh, Mm. Shining Girls, Legion, and The Umbrella Academy, which is another show that has a fantastic uh, soundtrack. So shout out to Maggie Phillips. She knows what she's doing. She should get a raise. I please mentor me, Maggie. (laughs) You, if you saw the playlists I have, yeah, that's my resume girl. Like come find me. Come at me. I'm going to find you on LinkedIn after this, babe. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of playlists, how many playlists um, re- uh, regarding Our Flag Means Death have you made? Um, <laughs> cue circus music. Um, <laughs> because, like, that's what's playing in my head all day yeah, when our yeah. prayer mm-hmm. isn't. Um, gosh. So I have my... So Caitlin will tell you, um, the initial playlist I made for the show was, like, an immediate reaction to having finished it. Um, it was a rock opera. It was a rock it. opera playlist, and it goes through kind of the motions. It, it basically follows the um, the season um, from beginning to end. Uh, there'll be a link to it in the episode notes. Um, but it was really special to me to create that because I was like, "This is what this is when this happens. This is when that happens." Because um, I'm I'm really big on like music editing and film. It's a big part of my life and existence. Um, and making playlists to kind of encompass those visuals in my head. So there was that, and then I made one just for, like, Steed, characterizing his personality. I made one for Ed. I made one for Izzy. Um, I made um, those same three playlists again, but just with Taylor Swift songs. And I had a very comprehensive um, thesis for why each Taylor Swift song um, went with uh, each, like, episode, or with each person and, like, their their characteristics. Um, and then most recently, uh, and this is a new one for, that I'm debuting right here, right now, today for you all, Caitlin, uh, I made one about uh, if the show was actually set in the Wild West and they were cowboys instead. Oh my god. And I won't stop there. Happy Please pride. don't. They're all good. <laughs> They're all so good. Like, I I listen to all the playlists and I'm like, yeah, of course this person would have this song in their play. It's just, uh, it, you have a special gift for that. And Thank you. Every single one of them is great. So Legend we will be, free. yeah, we will be linking definitely the rock opera and maybe more because if I, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Why'd you stop talking? Oh, he had, I, was just, I was just reliving that moment of episode three where they meet for the first time. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about because we were just talking about that. Nothing just happened. <laughs> I've just been sitting here the whole time. I did not move at all. Yeah, I know. I yeah, this has been a totally normal time. <laughs> <laughs> uh attempting to get back on track here, which if there's a track we haven't found it yet, please tell us where it is. Uh we're trying to race. Uh, We're do you have, have to hire someone to professionally hire, like edit this episode just so we don't have to think about it? <laughs> yeah, girl, I think I'm just going to, you know, throw myself off of a roof tomorrow <laughs> instead. <Ooh. laughs> like, edit this is going to be fucking insane. All right. Do you have a favorite crew member? I, I do. Um, I adore Mr. Buttons. <laughs> oh, okay. He's my homie. Oh, <laughs> He has just, like, such a vibe. Like, it's the type of vibe that I want to carry through my life. Just, like, the aloofness of somebody who probably knows a lot of things, just random things about things, but is also potentially a witch and could hex you. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And often has a random uh, pet sitting on their head. Um, yeah. So, in my case, it is definitely Manny. Shout out, Carl. <laughs> Um, but in his case, it is a seagull named Carl, uh, until it isn't, of course. Uh, R.I.P. Carl. Um, you know. Oh, rip you, Carl. You were a real, you you were a real one. power lines. Um, but yeah, that's, that's mine. How about you? It's so hard, because they're all so good. But I think, and it all comes down to it, my favorite is Frenchie. Because he, I, he's just so... He, on paper, seems so normal. I mean, this is all of them, for the most part. Like he, But he seems just like a regular guy. <laughs> but then he says, well, cats are witches, and it's because they have knives in their feet. And <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. Like, he's terrified of cats. And also, he's just, I, he's just constantly vibing. Um, I feel like both him and Alawande are always just, they're just kind of there have the time of their life they don't really care Mm -hmm. um but Frenchie specifically like he's always got his little loot and I think one of my favorite things is um during the wonderful chain scene um everyone's you know they're getting (laughs) they're getting attacked by the British but then Frenchie's just literally just sitting there playing his his instrument (laughs) And then he gets tackled. And it's just he's just there. He's just vibing. And he just has some of like the best one liners and like he says them with such sincerity. Like he he means it wholeheartedly and it's not a joke. But just he says it like in a the um the best revenge is dressing well episode, uh he says they're such dicks without spoons and like it's yeah. so funny and then during steed and izzy's sword fight in episode six he goes oh you cheeky bitch and just like a lot of his like a lot of his best lines are sometimes just like a little bit off camera or he's just kind of in the background but you hear him so distinctly and he's just always constantly reacting to what's around him and i don't know he just makes his smile so i think mine would be frenchy magnificent man love that man um, was there any this kind of ties into the next uh, question speaking of lines did you have a favorite line? there's a lot of very like poignant lines and a lot of just very very funny lines um, there's lines that live rent free in my head it's just specifically for the, how they're said like when Spanish Jackie goes my noses like that's very <laughs> funny or um, something about Jim when they say, yes, Nana, I got oodles of revenge. <laughs> Just, like, shit like that. But to be a little deep about it, I th- I think that there's two that come to mind. One, well, one's kind of like a two-parter. It's when Ed tells Steve, I think what makes Ed happy is you. And I am a sucker and I talk about this later on in our podcast, but I love it when people say I love you without saying I love you. Mm-hmm. And 
that's one of them uh and then they kiss and it's wonderful and i cry about it and i rewind it a normal amount of times and Mm. then steed returns that and says you make steed happy and to me that's him saying like i love you too and then to go along with that when steed goes home and he's talking to mary and asks him about what does it feel like to be in love um and she tells him and it's absolutely beautiful um and she's like i hope you find that someday and he goes i think i have and she asks what their name is and he says ed his name is ed and it's just something so beautiful about that line of saying like his name is ed because in his face again this is where reese darby has just the most beautiful acting skills like you see him realize like oh shit i like like that guy Mm -hmm. and like just the realization and the the, like it's almost like calm that spreads over him where he's just like Mm. oh I am in love with this person and I know he's in love with me and now I know it's like him making sense of all these feelings that he's felt because in his life he's never been shown love before Mm -hmm. Um, and we see that like his father was uh, I don't think his, his, his father was very verbally abusive Um, He was bullied as a kid by all of the kids around him. Uh, He was put into an arranged marriage with a woman he just didn't love. And she, same for her, like she was put into that marriage and they didn't love each other, but they tried, Mm -hmm. she tried to make it work. And he was just never happy in that and never felt loved. And like he would, uh, like everything that he liked, she didn't like. And it's just, he was never shown like all of the things that he liked everyone would always put down and right with ed he always like reassured steed like no this is cool oh i really like what you're doing and like always just was like supporting him and so like for steed to realize that in that moment being like oh shit i'm in love with this man like it it was beautiful and it made me sob like a little baby when i watched it for the first time what about you what was your first it was the same thing it it was like kind of the same thing for me um especially that scene i'll actually read the line um that mary says uh in that very end scene um when she's talking with you in the bed um she says it feels easy it's just like breathing he understands my idiosyncrasies finds them charming even we expose each other to new things new ideas and we laugh a lot we just pass the time so well i'd call those things love i hope you find that like I mean, just the writing there um, is, I mean, like, wonderful. Um, I I think it's just such a profound way to describe love. Um, And I think a very unique way that hasn't been done before, because I think, you know, there's a lot of content out there. um, I I like to believe we aren't, but maybe, you know, we're starting to hear love kind of described the same way a lot. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, there's only so many ways you can describe love. But I really liked that scene because... I've never heard love described in that way. And when Steed kind of realizes in that moment that that's what he feels for Ed, um, it is beautiful. Um, and for me, it, it was beautiful, not just because it's it's t- very talented writing um, and acting that takes place in that scene, but also because it's real. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like a lot of the things that happened at this point in the show are things that um, I never would have imagined between... Um, two characters uh two queer characters on tv um you know like as a queer person it is like it 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 really is really deeply validating and comforting um to see that expressed you know like with such um passion um and that's not to say that there aren't other incredible um shows about queer love out there which there are I'm sure we'll be talking about those down the line. Um, but I think this one really uh, struck me because it really was just so unabashedly, um, like, open and um, owning, and owning the fact that it is a show for queer people. It's a show for people like me, you know, people in the queer community. Um, so it really did it for me like I'm just thinking about it right now I'm like oh, I'm gonna cry 
Uh, but no, I'm not. I'm going to suck the tears back in um, <laughs> because I'm wearing makeup. I'm wearing makeup, makeup, makeup. Um, so on that note, um, <laughs> was there any symbolism in uh, the show that really like stuck out to you? Um, well, I can't look at oranges the same anymore. No. So there's that. Yep. And then if I see any sort of red fabric, I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> um, so specifically those two. And because they both, and I am not going to be able, forewarning, I am not going to be able to say this beautifully or wonderfully. Um, some of this is not original. This is just what I thought of while watching it myself and then what um, I have seen discussion online about it because sometimes you just got to go batshit with the online besties. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, the, the red silk in particular is so obviously Ed's heart and what gets me about the whole you wear fine things well not just the whole thing of Ed realizing that he could have that lifestyle, he could wear those fine things even though he grew up thinking he never could. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that that silk is his heart and he always kept it close and hidden on himself for no one else to see and then he's holding it and then Steed takes it so gently. Like, he just he just says, like, may I? And then Ed doesn't even let... Yeah. Ed doesn't even let go of it. He just kind of lets it, like, slowly slide out of his hands as Steed takes it. And he just so carefully folds it up with so much care. And then he places it in, Ste- in Ed's pocket. And places his heart on him for the world to see (laughs) and for him to do that for Ed and for it to be Steed the one to bring that out of him and just take such care of it and do that for him is just so fucking beautiful and we know that that's so important to Ed because at the end, when we see the red silk again, um, it's when he's letting go of Edward Teach and he's becoming Blackbeard and we see him gently hold this silk and then he, in his mind, is replaying that whole scene again and then he just lets it go and he's he's letting his heart go because Steed is gone and it... it fucking breaks my heart so much (laughs) and uh hurts me uh so those are my thoughts on the red silk in particular uh did you have any symbolism that made you go batshit bunkers woo woo ah in that order thanks so much for that you're welcome i think i need to end the podcast no okay bye Um, so (laughs) Oh, uh, I think it's time to scream into the cat house. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> That's what it's here for. For me, um, I think it's just very simply like the lighthouse and Kraken. Um, Why did I? Symbols. Uh, no, but yours was so much fucking cooler. I haven't heard that one a lot yet. Um, but like... Yeah, but he's a fucking lighthouse. There is something... There is, there is something so unhinged about, like, the dark light, um, like, foil between two characters that love each other. Um, something so unhinged about that. Um, it's unwelcoming. Uh, I think Caitlin's crying. I don't want, nope, keep going. It's fine. Don't worry. (laughs) Um, and I mean, the fact that, like, Steed kind of... Um, serves as, like, this grounding force, um, this way to keep you from crashing up on the rocks is, I mean, it's so much, (laughs) um, 
Um, whereas, like, the Kraken is, like, this, not this alter ego, but this, this part of, of Ed that he kind of, like, can get lost in, um, and is very dark and is kind of, like, an encapsulation of all of his past trauma. Uh, like, um, (laughs) like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I was watching the show, and I was, like, recognizing these symbols and I was like literally thinking I thought this was supposed to be a show about pirates like I didn't know this was gonna be like uh, like this deep like oh my god like um Caitlin and I went around to um pretty much every single shop in Annapolis when we took a trip there uh in spring just looking for like a lighthouse and kraken charmed uh necklaces for like friendship necklaces um because we're that batch insane about this. And we found it. Because here she is. <laughs> I have mine too. It's over here. Uh, we ended up we ended up not being able to get a Kraken necklace because believe it or not, um, Annapolis, Maryland doesn't have Kraken necklaces. Which honestly seems like a loss on their part. Uh, but we got this little anchor guy instead. And yeah. never love an anchor as they say. <laughs> I have something to say. Go ahead. <laughs> On the wait, is it in your mouth? Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Um, I fish boss is home with you, right? What are you afraid that I'm gonna choke on it and then he's gonna need to get rid of Heimlich? As your friend, yeah, I am concerned. It's tasty. It's delicious. It tastes like trauma. Okay, fantastic. I'm gonna go off about a lighthouse real quick. Whoa! Um, <laughs> Alright, I'm listening. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, mm, feelings about lighthouses. So, uh, you remember, you remember, you, re- you ever have a dream when you, when you, um, <laughs> <laughs> every day I'm okay. girl. <laughs> Episode four. They, uh, <laughs> lighthouse. <laughs> okay. Is it? Let it out. It's okay. It's all right. Lighthouses you're supposed to avoid so you don't crack up on the rocks. Or alternatively, you're supposed to guide each other home. And I just think it's kind of neat and a choice, if you will, that in the first episode where they meet and they swap clothes and they decide to, you know, learn from each other that together they become a lighthouse because they are essentially guiding each other to who they can be as a full person um with steed being the gentleman pirate but also learning something from ed's uh career as blackbeard but also ed letting not letting go of his blackbeard uh i don't want to say alter ego but his blackbeard part of him um but also learning to be more of like a, a, a normal person because of Seed and then being able to become lighthouses. <laughs> that was it. I don't I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I'm saying. I <laughs> they they became a lighthouse for each other and they see that in the first episode. And I just I was, think all of my past English teachers wow. would be like, she's a little confused, but she's got the spirit. But they. <laughs> That's great, Caitlin. Pass the blunt. <laughs> like, and then. The <laughs> when we get the flashbacks to the Kraken scenes where Ed is killing his dad, there's a lighthouse in the background and. I don't have anything important to say about that, but I just want to point out that that's there. Fun fact. I didn't even know that, but I'm going to go back and watch it now and feel things about it. (laughs) Oh my god. Uh oh. (laughs) Uh oh. (laughs) Not well about this. Not well about this, love. Um, So, tell me a little bit about some of your favorite fan theories that you've seen. Um, I think my favorite thing as a fandom that everyone has decided is that 
Lucius isn't dead. Fuck you. <laughs> like, I I think that's yeah. I think that says something about the like show where you trust the creators so strongly that they seemingly kill off one of your one of their main characters and one of their most beloved characters, and the reaction isn't oh my god, Lucius. It's oh he's fine. We'll see him next season. And I think my favorite thing to come out of this yeah. renewal is yeah. Nathan Fode acting as if that didn't even happen. He's just like, yeah, no, I'm going to be in it, basically. Like, <laughs> there's, no, there's no fear yeah. there at all. So I think one of my yeah. favorite, it, it's not even a theory. It's just like a concept of, and it makes me laugh so hard. I'll have to find the post, the original post I said it, because all credit goes to the original poster. It made me, I, like, mm. laughed out loud so fucking hard. I, like, it, okay. So, basically, it's this whole concept of, okay, Ed and Steed re- reunite, and Ed's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I got rid of all of your books. And Steed's like, oh, it's okay, I have an auxiliary library. And he pulls the secret lever, and then a door opens, and then you just see Lucius in there eating paper. <laughs> It's just the image of them being like, oh, no, don't worry. And they pull up the lever, and he's just there like, ah. <laughs> like, because like, he, was, he was, like, hidden in the hidden passages of the ship this entire time. <laughs> and um, <laughs> just doing that. So I really like that one, or just the idea of him, like, uh, oh, he can stay afloat because of his wooden finger, or just him just being on the ship the entire time. Um, without anyone else knowing it. I, I think it's so funny. And what's so great about this show is that there are no rules, essentially. Like, and that's fine. Like, no one goes, yeah. how are they already here? Like, the travel doesn't matter. It's a fun pirate show. Um, Jim literally right. just appears uh, by the power of gay magic, I can only assume. <laughs> they just reappear on the ship with no explanation, and everyone's just like, "Yeah, of course, <laughs> here they are." <laughs> They're back. So I just, Get there. I yeah. don't know. I just feel like there's so much potential with the no rules being set that I I cannot wait to see how they explain and therefore do not explain how Lucius is alive, um, and also how steed will have the red silk because that's also going to happen it's one of my favorite theories he's going to show up with it so Mm -hmm. i i think i think the lucius surviving theories are my favorite how about you uh i mean first i just want to respond to what you said because um i think that's what makes this show awesome is the no rules point um because it's not even like plot holes it's not like this show is so clever it can't have any plot holes and then there are some it's like This show, like, isn't... It's a character-driven show. You don't care about, like, how X happens and how Y happens and how Z happens. And it doesn't really matter to the plot. It's not essential. And it's funny that it doesn't matter, you know? A lot of shows, they try so hard to be clever. um, To be like, oh, we're, like, so profound for all of these plot choices we make. Um, And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you can produce a good character driven show with like that is also like a, a yeah. beautiful romance like you know what I mean and it's also funny and also has like incredible writing like it doesn't matter if you tie up all those loose ends and I love that it doesn't it matter really does. and in fact it makes the show more enjoyable so <laughs> just had to like throw that out there for the girls um you know throw some some tea and some shade at um <laughs> a Mr. Stephen Muffet my my <laughs> other arch enemy besides Joanne Rowling uh, yeah. I have enemies with a lot of British people. You're going to find out. It goes Stephen Moffat, Joanne <laughs> Rowling, Boris Johnson, um, and then the list goes on. Um, but for me, um, I said uh, I'd love another lighthouse scene. Um, and that's like my favorite theory is like the way that the lighthouse could be incorporated back into the show. Um, other thing, because I, I haven't really been... I feel like I've been reading a lot of fan theories, but they've all been going over my head, and I've eventually, I've, I've officially lost track of what's yeah. canon and what's already happened in my head. Um, so I think, I think for me, um, I, I immediately the thing that comes to mind because I've been reading a lot of fan fiction um, is like the the trope that I see over and over again in a lot of different fan fictions 
that is essentially um, them meeting each other at some point and one of them saying hello and the other one saying hello yourself. That's hot as shit. Like, continue that. Like, hello. Like, if I was... Okay. (laughs) I'm going to demonstrate with Manny. He's a paid actor. Like, if I was, you know, romantically involved with Manny, which I'm not... Um, but if I was, and if I was like, hello, and he was like, hello yourself, I'd be like, wow, <laughs> we're getting married, you know? It's actually good for that. It's the most emotional like scene on you his face. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, there's that, and then the other thing, and I keep seeing this a lot in fan fiction, and I just feel like this is might as well be canon, like, David Jenkins doesn't pull this right from archive of our own. <laughs> he should. But, like, the thought of them meeting and, at some point, Ed slowly coming out of his, like, Kraken vibe and um, Steve saying, there you are. No! There you are. (laughs) If that line is not in the show. David Jenkins, look me in the eye right now. You can steal this from fanfic. I don't even care. If there is not a scene where Steve is... In one way or another, taking off Ed's Kraken makeup, and then when it's all gone, Steed says to Ed, there he is, or there you are. I'm not saying Mm. it's on site, but I'm not not saying that. I'm just saying. Yeah. I feel like that's a necessity. Like, I trust... I trust that you will do the right thing, David Jenkins. I trust that you will do the right thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one. Ah, um, so, uh, I think we've kind of already gone down this deep, dark hole, but let's stay Yeah, there. I love this. Um, what are three things that you want to see in season two, Caitlin? Oh, God. Well, now that we have it... <laughs> I, I don't think I've fully processed that we're actually going to see them reunite. And I don't even know if I can theorize how they're going to reunite. Um, there's a lot of really good ideas out there, but I trust the man himself, David Jenkins, to uh, do it justice. And uh, I can't wait to be absolutely fucking sobbing over it. So um, I can't wait to be unwell in my future. <sighs> Three things I want to see. Is I I really want to see Steed initiate a kiss with them because I feel like that Mm -hmm. is really important for him as a character now that he knows his feelings and where he stands. Um, I think that'd be important for Ed to show, hey, he likes you back. Clear, mm. clear as day. Like you can't Get even doubt it. Just some validation. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's my first thing. What is yours? Mine were like I didn't really think mine out that much because it's like I'm kind of at this place in my life emotionally where I'm like whatever they're gonna do I'm gonna like it. Like I don't want, like you can do it. You guys can do whatever you want. You can put them yeah. both in like I don't know like Lulu lemon leggings and like send them jogging all over New Zealand and I won't I I'm do it I don't know I don't care like it's gonna be good like no matter what it is like I'm just like yeah good um if I had any like asks I will reiterate another lighthouse scene um she is very important to me <laughs> um and uh Israel hands just I know he's gonna be there I feel like the things I'm manifesting, they're, like, already guaranteed. So, I like, can't I really want the characters um, in the show to be there. <laughs> I really want everybody to be in the show. Oh, you know who I want to be yeah. in the show? Here's the second thing I want. I want... Go. Jermaine... I, how do we say his name wrong? Jermaine Clement to oh. be there. How? I don't know. And I saw one theory where they want him to be uh, the... I can't even remember the name of the captain that Ed used to work with with Calico Jack, but I want him to be him. Um, I just want him to show up. It could be for a scene, and I'd be happy, but uh, I just think that'd be fun to have all of them together. So that'd be cool. He is very important to me. I think if we're going to drag everybody from uh, like the What We Do in the Shadows yeah. universe into this one, 
then I'm gonna make the case right now for oh, I got it okay I'm gonna make the case right now uh-huh. for an episode with Colin Robinson Ooh. now Caitlin you don't know what that means yet because you haven't like do- dove in yet. yet but an episode like this is not feasible all this would never happen let me be clear but for those of you at home who know, who are following along, an episode of Our Black Means of Death with Colin Robinson would make me shit a prick. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just thinking about it right now. Like, he would start going off about cannons or something, and everybody on the ship would fall asleep. It would be delicious. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I love that. I That's what I have. I also have some more explicit a- asks. Um, capital E. For explicit mm-hmm. um david jacobs if you're listening uh you know what you've done and you know what i would like you to do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well said how about you uh third thing i want to see how jim and frenchy are being a part of blackbeard's crew i want to know what that means for them as characters I want to know like I feel like Jim is just constantly trying to like not kill Blackbeard but like also kill Blackbeard because they could totally take him um Mm. I I I want to see how that like like Lucius is obviously going to be very heavily affected because he was literally thrown overboard um right but and the rest of the crew were abandoned, so they're gonna be uh, dealing with all of that too. But I I just want to know what is it like for Jim and Frenchie right now? Like, are yeah. they having a terrible, horrible time? Are they <laughs> like just kind of going with the flow? Um, oh my god! Also, <laughs> I want to see. Actually, this is what I really want to see. From season two because I love mm. the angst I want Ed to find out about Steed's death ah uh, yeah because Steed faked his whole death I I I need to see I need to see the turmoil on his face because I mm. know that Tyga is going to absolutely kill it with the acting there I, I, I want to see him hear about Steed's death not believe it but then be told, no, yeah, he's dead. Somehow confirm it. And just see right. how that affects him because we knowing at that point that, like, maybe he just doesn't like Steed. Maybe he hates Steed. He's still mad. Obviously, he's still mad at Steed for leaving him. But what does the news of his death do to him and how does that affect their eventual reunion? Because one of my favorite things is when character A thinks character B is dead but character B is actually very much alive thank you very much and eventually they reunite and then you get the whole like oh my god I thought you were dead and she's like actually just kidding it was a fuckery yeah. and they go wah, 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 wah. and they kiss and they're both boys um, so <laughs> that's, that's what I want to see <laughs> so your favorite TikTok Please sound um, so yeah, that actually, you brought up a couple of things that are, I definitely want to, like, second a lot of what you yeah. said. Um, Jim's character development is very important to me, and I need more of them in, in this season. Um, they're very special to me. They're very <laughs> special to me. And I I just need to know, like, I, I want to know more about um, how they went about avenging the death of their family, and I want to know more about how like that dynamic fits into season two and i also am really interested in their dynamic with blackbeard and i'm also really interested in their damn dynamic with spanish jackie like i don't know spanish jackie is going to just be like a one-off character for season one but if spanish jackie comes back then i just i liked their vibe yeah they made me laugh like so yeah also like on the on the topic of jim solely because uh, Vico Ortiz cosplayed Izzy Hands at uh, like a renaissance fair I want to I want to see Jim uh, <laughs> I just want to see Jim dress up as Izzy just to fuck with him yeah I want more of their dynamic <laughs> yeah too. I feel like, like they could be friends they could be <laughs> friends they would hang out 
Yeah. Like, Izzy would like pretend that he doesn't like the friendship, but like deep down, like yeah. you know, he enjoy enjoys it. And I feel like Jim, like they right. would actually get a kick out of Izzy. So. Yeah, there's definitely they need to interact this season. Yeah. No, for sure, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. So I know. Um, <laughs> do we even go here? I know that we. I said. I don't even want to think or theorize how this would happen. But do you, uh, do you have any, uh, ideas on how Ed and Seed might reunite in season two? Yeah, I've theorized about this a little bit. Um, just based on what David Jenkins said yesterday, um, or recently, um, in an interview about how, um, Ed and Steve's relationship is going to progress in season too definitely get the sense it's going to be kind of like a heartbreaking moment it's going to be maybe a little more of a slow burn yeah we're gonna die around. um it's going to be a lot about steed potentially rebuilding his relationship with ed and ed coming to terms with that hurt and like healing from that which is something that the man deserves um so i'm really interested to see how those dynamics play out i think it's probably going to be something along the lines of like somehow their boats are going to intercept again, that dinghy and the revenge, and they will see each other again, either on the ocean or at a port, and that's how they'll connect again, and it's going to be a whole thing. And I don't, I definitely, like, one thing I've gone back and forth in my head about a lot is if it's going to be, like, an immediate thing, if that's something we're going to get in, like, the first episode, or if that's something we're going to get a little later, like, in later episodes. Um, either way, I'm going to be on the edge of my seat. Uh, did you have any thoughts about how this might happen, Caitlin? I, like, specific-wise, no. I, I feel like I've read so many options that, like, any of them are... I, I just know that whatever they give us is going to be good, and it's going to yeah. tear my little heart out, and I'm going to mm. be inconsolable for a long time. So, I, I think... I, I agree with you. Like, I don't think it's going to happen. It's not going to happen, episode one. I thought, may- I, I, as you were talking, I was thinking, oh, maybe they would reunite at the end of episode three to kind of parallel where they meet. Ah, yeah. In season That's one. What I was so, like, I feel yeah. like, I feel like what they'll do um, is at the end of episode three, they'll be in the same room or they'll see each other. Episode ends and we're all losing our little fucking minds over it and being like oh my God, oh my God. and uh whether we have to wait a week or what for it we're gonna be insane and then in episode four is their actual re- reunion now i don't think it's gonna be an automatic like oh yeah i forgive you let's continue because mm-hmm. they both be hurting bad mm. especially ed um and on Steed's end, like, his crew was abandoned by Ed. Um, also, due to his action. So, like, I feel like Steed is going to be, like, dealing with that himself. So, there's a lot to unpack there. I feel like, if anything, they're going to be forced to work together. Um, and, like, they have, like, this, like, I, I'm, I'm mad at you and there's a lot of tension here, but, like, for the sake of other circumstances, we need to just keep moving. And I think they'll have yeah. conversations throughout the thing, the episode where, or the episodes where they are able to start, they start slowly getting out their feelings to each other and then mm. eventually have like this explosive, and not like in a bad sense, but just in like the all of our feelings are out here and like they're saying things and they really get down to the meat to it and they start saying the things that they haven't been saying to each other mm. all season and then they finally get that out and then um start to learn to work together again with each other and learn to fix their relationship because i think it'll be evident that they both want to continue their relationship but also at the same time have to acknowledge that they both hurt each other in some way Right. So I, it's definitely gonna be a slow burn, and it's definitely going to end me. Period. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna keep inserting that song whenever it gets to this lull where we're both clearly like still processing and also running out of energy. Um, so the, oh, this show, dude. 
I'm drained. I, I just have so much to say, but none of them are words. It's just a lot of screeching. Yeah. And verbal keyboard like, smashing. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like you know Donnie from the Wild Thornberries, the one who's always like. Yeah. Bleh, 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 bleh. That's gonna be. That's, yeah. that's me about this show. <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah yep yep just a lot of lot of vocalizing a lot of vocalizing but not like anything you know like there's nothing substantial really there understand yeah it's just that well all right caitlin we got this other note in our notes that just says restarby my beloved what is can you tell me more about that yeah um <laughs> so that means restarby my beloved Oh my god. Yeah. No, I it was just I don't know, I just I really I think that um I just think that he's a really good actor and I as I think I said in the beginning uh, many years ago that um I'm just happy that he's getting the recognition he deserves because he's not a household name. Um he is now But girls. he he is in my house cuz I, I just find him fascinating. I, I think I'm literally going through his entire like IMDb profile. <laughs> like the next thing I need to watch is Fly of the Concords. Like I'm very excited. There's not a thing that he's been in that I haven't liked. And I a lot mm-hmm. of it I like because of him. And he just like I said earlier, just seems to unapologetically be himself and he's just he likes what he likes. He does what he does. He likes what he's doing. And I just, I hope, and I'm trying to be someone who's just like, yep, this is me. I'm having a good time. And you can do what you want with that. But I don't care because I'm having fun. And that's all I want from life is just to have fun. And I, I see him doing that and I admire him for it. And I'm, I'm very happy for him that he has gotten this role and he has gotten to have a leading role when most you when most of his life he's just been lower on the call list so um i don't know him personally but i'm proud of him some would say uh he was born to play this role and i agree yeah yeah he really was i yeah. he i i just i i just think he's great i think he's neat <laughs> <laughs> Do we end it? Do we end it? <laughs> and then we have last on the list. Yes. We have Taika Watiti, my beloved. Um, no, yeah. I uh I grew up on a lot of Taika's films, um, because like I think I mentioned this before, but I have a weird indie dad. <laughs> And now I'm a weird indie dad um, to my cat. So, um, you know, I grew up with a lot of his movies and I spent a lot of time with like the things that he's written and directed. And um, then when this series came out, I was really excited because it was just so incredible to like kind of see him come to life in this show. Um, So uh, Taika, you're like a creative genius. an inspiration to girlies who like writing. Keep doing you, babe. Love and Thunder in theaters in July. <laughs> so, <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we made it through our thoughts and feelings. Sure did something um, there. About this show. And there will be more. Um, because you have the good fortune of um, s- subscribing to uh, this podcast, Lip Eye and Light, on Spotify, Apple, uh or, or I guess iTunes or uh, Google podcasts where you get to hear us not only talk about books but also this show upon um, a not so random occasion. Yeah, um, we will be continuing with our regularly scheduled program, but as you'll come to find out, sometimes we just have a lot of big feelings about things that we just need to get out there, and we decide, well, we have a podcast now, why not record it? So that's what we do. <laughs> so look forward mm-hmm. to more. Uh, episodes like this in the future we do actually Mm -hmm. plan on possibly reacting to season two um in some way or or another whether it be 
together and put on YouTube or epi- podcast episodes about it. It's going to happen either way, and we're very yeah. excited about it. So We are very excited about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our very special Our Flag Means Death Centered episode. Uh, if you're listening to this uh, right now, sometime after release then stay tuned for us to talk about our favorite book the quill prince it's our favorite yeah guys. that is our You're next book um you don't want to miss it yep we also had really big feelings about that it was all good feelings though it was our favorite <laughs> i can't even pretend is, to agree with that sentence <laughs> it's a better book than the show that we just talked about for three hours straight are you saying that was a better book than that than Our Flag Means Death was a show? Yeah. Because I might have yeah, to play it. Yeah, I am. I'll stand by it. Okay. Good, I get severance pay. <laughs> I'm out. Fuck you guys. It's been oh, good. That's all it took. All right, guys. Well, this has been the podcast. I'm Roland will no longer be joining us. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to our special Our Flag Means Death episode. We will see you next week. Nope. We will see you in a couple of weeks when we talk about the cruel prince, unless we decide to have more big feelings about the gay pirates in the meantime. Have a great life. <laughs>